Republican Congressman Peter King of New York serves on the House Homeland Security Committee. Ron Kessler is the author of In the President's Secret Service, Behind the Scenes with the Agents in the Line of Fire and the Presidents They Protect. Gentlemen, good morning to both of you. Thank you, Matt. Good morning. Congressman King, let's start with you. This couple did something that I think a lot of people would love to try to do. They, they got dolled up. They went to the White mm -hmm. House. They attended a state dinner. They had to assume they were going to get stopped at the door. And guess what? They didn't. Now, you sit on a committee that oversees the Secret right. Service. How much heat are they going to face? over this? Uh, they have to face a lot. And I have a great regard for the Secret Service, and I can't still figure out how this happened in that I've been to the White House any number of times, and as you have, and you stopped at at least two or three uh, checkpoints, and at almost all of those points, at least the final point, there's always somebody there from the White House as well with the Secret Service. And an event of this magnitude, uh, again, at the White House itself, it's beyond me how this could have happened. And we've all heard of what could have happened. And, and, and if any of those other scenarios had taken place, whether it's anthrax or a kitchen knife or whatever, we'd be covering this story in a much different way. But have we learned a valuable lesson just by the fact that this happened? Well, that's why we have to have a full investigation to find out exactly what the Secret Service is doing to prevent this from ever happening again. First of all, how it happened, why it happened, and how it'll never happen again. And it puts us on notice that, yes, we do need more protection. We have to have more fallback. I mean, if, if one uh, Secret Service agent makes a mistake, and you have to assume someone's always going to make a mistake, that has to be the backup. That has to be the layers of defense. Well, Ron, that's a good question to then turn to you. I mean, there are probably a lot of people sitting at home right now who are saying, wait a second, it, it, I had a harder time getting through security this weekend traveling for Thanksgiving to an airport than this couple did at the White House. Does it, does it reveal a major flaw in security strategy or does it reveal one guy asleep at the switch? No, it's, it's part of a systemic problem with the Secret Service. Secret Service has been cutting corners ever since Homeland Security took, o took it over in 2003. And for example, they don't do magnetometer screening at some events or they'll shut it down early under pressure from staffs. They're very sensitive to not offending political uh, staffs or, or the White House. But are you, gonna uh, are you telling me they're cutting corners with the nation's first African-American president? And we know that unfortunately that brings with it even greater risk than we're faced by past presidents. Well, it's just like any government scandal. You know, you can't understand it, but it's going on. Uh, and this this went on under the Bush administration. Um, Bush White House aides would pressure them to uh, to let people in at events, and, and sometimes they would even put people through magnetometers, but turn them off so that even if there was a weapon, uh, no alarm would sound. I mean, I know that sounds unbelievable, but this is what's been going on. Uh, you know, as an example of the spinelessness of, of Secret Service management, when uh, Dick Cheney's daughter Mary uh, insisted that Secret Service agents take her friends to restaurants and the Se Secret Service objected because that's not their job, um, she got the detail leader removed. So the management so did not back the agents this who is all their job. Congressman King, I mean, he's saying that they're cutting corners now that they're under Homeland Security. Is that your, your take on this? No, and I've read Mr. Kessler's book, too. No, I, I don't see it that way at all. Because if anything, uh, I think the, home, uh, the uh, Secret Service is better under Homeland Security. The budget's gone up 30, 35 percent. And they're more suited to be within the Department of Homeland Security. The Treasury Department, where they were before, was not a law enforcement agency. And the Treasury Secretary didn't even want the uh, Secret Service in the department. Ten seconds for each of you on this. Ron, I'll start with you. I mean, it, it, you can't make up a charge just to fit the situation. But do you think these people committed a crime? And do they have to be charged just to dissuade oh, people down the road? I think they will be prosecuted just as a deterrent and a lot of laws that can be used. But, but really, you know, I've interviewed over 100 current or former Secret Service agents as well as the people at headquarters. And, and the belief is that it's just a matter of time before there is an assassination because of the corner cutting that I detail in the book. Now, you can argue about Homeland Security and the structure, but the fact is that the Secret Service has been shockingly yeah. derelict in its duty. Congressman King, getting back to the question, just yeah. ask briefly, if you will, should these should this couple be charged with the crime? Yeah, absolutely. This is very serious. This is serious. People sort of think it's a joke. It's not. We have the security of the president of the United States and the leaders of the free world here. You have the prime minister of India, whose country was attacked in Mumbai last year. We can't show this type of weakness to terrorists or to psychopaths, especially against President Obama, who is probably the most threatened president in our history. Congressman Peter King and Ron Kessler, gentlemen, thanks to both of you. I appreciate it. Thank you, Matt. Thank you. Still. Now I'm over here at 48th and 6th for a Fox and Friends. I'll be starting in about 45 minutes or so. Uh, you know, today's show went pretty well, and now it was Fox and Friends. We talk about Secret Service and about Afghanistan, about the first speech tomorrow night. We'll probably on with Brian Kilmeade, old guy from Mississippi. So anyway, heading in, see if I can get past security.
The president will announce sending troops to Afghanistan tomorrow night, and at the same time, he will announce an exit strategy. At the same time? Is that a good idea? Peter King is the congressman from New York State. He joins us live. What do you think? So he's going to go out and he's going to say, I'm going to send this many people, and we don't know exactly. Uh, Judith Miller earlier said that they're massaging the number, and he met with his uh, war council last night. But at the same time, while we send them, we're going to get out. Yeah, first of all, let me say, Eventually. If, if he is sending the 30 or 34,000, I support him fully. I think he's doing the right thing, and it's important as Americans that we stand with the president on this. I am concerned if he talks too much about an exit strategy or a timeline to get out, uh, because that's going to, first of all, uh, people in Afghanistan, we're trying to recruit them to be with us, sure. and they're afraid, or if they do sign up with us, and suddenly we think we have success in a year or two, we're going to stop pulling out, and they'll be left behind. Mm -hmm. Pakistan, in the... Uh, Late 80s, we, were, we used them against the Soviets. We won in Afghanistan, and we pulled back, and Pakistan was left dealing with the Taliban. So I, I think we, you know, we've been in Korea for over 50 years. We've been in Germany for over 60 years. Uh, not that we need you know, 100,000 troops there, but uh, we can't be saying we're going to pull out of the region. Yeah. We, we have a goal. We have to achieve that goal, and then we have to, I think, stay there to provide stability to the region. The reason that he would talk about the exit strategy is to try and appease the left part of his party, right? So my question to you this morning, Congressman, is can you ever make any kind of a decision as president of the United States without politics involved? No, and I don't really criticize the president for this because to be an effective wartime president, you do need political support. So he is trying to bring as much of his party along as he can. But the base of the Democratic Party is basically against any war effort we're involved in. Yeah. During the campaign, they said Afghanistan was a good war. Well, now they want to get out of Afghanistan, too. Uh, so I think he's, his, 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 uh, the trick is to bring as much of his base along without uh, scaring off our allies, without right. scaring off the people in Afghanistan. And uh, the fact that he waited so long, I think, was wrong, too. I think that created uncertainty among our allies and even among the troops and among people in the military. Mm -hmm. And what about the suggestion by a, a number of people on the opposite side of the aisle from you who were on the chat shows yesterday who said, hey, OK, we're going to commit to a, a bunch of guys, but Afghanistan's got to help us. And they really haven't helped enough. Yeah, I mean, the government of Afghanistan is far from perfect. It has corruption, and it's ineffective. On the other hand, we do have to train their police, train the army. And we're not in the, just for Afghanistan. We're in there for ourselves. We, sure. have to, we have to maintain a secure Afghanistan because we cannot allow the Taliban and al-Qaeda to come back in. We need a base of operations. And we can't just say we're going after al-Qaeda and not the tel uh, Taliban. These guys don't wear different uniforms. Right, complicated situation. Uh, something that happened over the weekend, this couple manages to crash into mm. the White House party. You are now calling for an investigation. Yeah, I am. Uh, to me, this was a shocking breakdown in security. Uh, and I've been to any number of events at the White House. I don't know how they did this. Mm. There's always at least two or three checkpoints. There's almost always somebody from the White House staff. I'm really surprised they're saying nobody from the social office or from the White House staff was there with the Secret Service agent. So, uh, again, I do believe there should be a full investigation. And I have a great respect for the Secret Service. They do a phenomenal job. And I just can't imagine how this happened. And it's, uh, especially with President Obama, who was the most threatened president we've ever had in our history. It's got to be tight security. All right. Uh, Congress Congressman Peter King, always a pleasure. Thanks for joining Steve, us. Steve, thanks, Gretchen. Thank you. Good to see you. All right.